Okay, so I am here with the sawmill uh, on the day before it is being packed up to be put away before the events. Um, and I'm just going to go through all of the changes that I've made to get it working and the uh, things that I think that might still be wrong with it and maybe a uh, point that you could go to to repair it in the future if something goes wrong. So, first and probably most obvious, uh, this case is uh, an aftermarket build. Um, you can find the enclosure itself available on McMaster Car. Uh, what we've got going on is we got a case here, uh, and it's got holes drilled in the back that allow it to uh, mount onto the motor plate. So you can see those mounting points here, here, back here, and over here. Um, behind this, we have an aluminum plate that's got uh, a layer of silicon window sealer in between it and the box. Uh, and that's because this box had to be modified some in order for there to be, uh, for these holes to mount correctly. So, you can kind of tell here, there's more hole here than there needs to be for this to mount properly. That's kind of one of the mistakes I made when building this box, uh, and one of the things I would fix if I got a new enclosure. Um, there should be template pieces uh, made of aluminum that live with all of the sawmill stuff that have these holes uh, outlined so that you can have those that spacing exactly so all you have to do is get the orientation of the box right which is one of the things that i had to put the back plate on here to fix is you uh originally this box sat at a uh a slight angle such that the bottom of the box would touch when this motor was at a lower tension and so I had to adjust that back plate in order to get a gap here so that the weight of the motor is not resting on the electrical box. You can see that one of the capacitors is missing. Um, right now that is uh, the capacitor connects to these two and it sits in this slot here. You can see this little aluminum bracket is what I came up with to hold the capacitors in place. Right now the black one is not plugged in either but it is functional. The uh, white one, which is a 40 microfarad capacitor, is not functional. Um, this is, for reference, a 280 microfarad, um, but it is still working. So that's what's going on here. You can also see that there is, this is not a solution that I like very much. This uh, wire that comes into this box is permanently siliconed in place. So if you wanted to swap out these wires here, you'd have to rip off all of this silicon. So a more permanent gasket there would be a good idea if somebody were rebuilding this. But that's pretty much all the changes for the electrical box. Once that new uh, 40 microfarad capacitor arrives, it can just be plugged into these. These terminals down here plug into the black capacitor. Um, and it's really easy to tell which one they plug into because this guy's got a resistor on two of its terminals so you just plug into the other two terminals and then you're good to go. So, other changes that have been made. Um, I had to reduce the belt tension because the way this motor was at before it had, uh, currently it has, you can just barely see there, two washers um, before it had three washers on each side. Now it's got two. Um, and three is too much tension. What happens is at rest, I'll put the motor down for this. At rest, when you have the belt on, the motor will sit up at an angle like this. So that when you tighten the nuts down, it pulls the motor into place and that increases the belt tension, right? But when that happens, you're also pulling up 
on the drive shaft. And what had happened before is that the gear that connects to the drive shaft, this guy right here, had worn away a portion of the drive shaft such that the gear no longer sat evenly. It would wobble. Um, and so it would come off even at really high tensions. Now, if you, um, if you have that tension too high, you risk damaging the, the shaft again, or um, you can actually have the gear slide because it's providing so much tension um, in a direction this way that it will pull up and off of the shaft. The uh, key here is not very um, good at holding this in that direction of force. So that brings us to the next point, is that this whole drive shaft assembly got replaced when I was here um, in, when I was working on it in April of 2021. So uh, this is all new and should be good and it's made out of a harder steel than the previous one so hopefully it lasts longer. One of the concerns I have with it though, is this key um, for the alignment that the gear is at, it only comes to about here, which is right where the, the set screw is at. So the set screw is sitting right on the end of the keyway. So it's, it's not providing a balance force on the middle of the, the key, which is what you would want. So having the machinist expand that keyway to run the full length of the gear might make this more stable and then you could increase the tension maybe on the gear and that might make it run better. But that is not necessarily a, a thing that needs to be done. It's just a concern that I have. So yeah, the tension here is two washers and that's been running Okay, um, it's not great, but I don't think that that's a fault of the tension. I think that's a fault of um, these aftermarket uh, adjustment points. So this sawmill, there are only 20 of them that have been made. And so it's not like a full mainstream, well understood, well made uh, sawmill with lots of spare parts. Um, the manual we use doesn't even isn't even the exact same as this sawmill. It's a slightly different version, and so there are adjustment points for how you calibrate the cuts that we had to add on, and so that means that these are not perfect. Um, and one of the issues that I ran into is that it can be really hard to get these, so specifically this point and uh, this point here. So this controls the depth of your cut, so how far it goes up and down into the log. Um, and I'll see if I can show you this. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this screw isn't, it's not touching. Right, it, it doesn't touch the, the bottom plate. Um, but we're still cutting a little high on our logs. So that's one thing that maybe could be fixed by adjusting some other part of the frame. The other thing that's a, that's a pretty significant issue is, so these guys adjust how the blade sits in this plane uh, and they do that by raising or lowering the front. The issue is that the slots that these bolts sit in are not very long. So you quickly reach the top or bottom of them when you're trying to make your adjustments. And you might hit that spot before you've gotten to the right angle where the blade is sitting pretty much flat. Um, and so that can cause some increased strain on the blade as it leans into one way or the other, which can cause more drag, which can stress out the motor, um, all of these not great things. So if there is a way to fix that, that would be awesome. I, I haven't 
been able to think of it. Um, but yeah, the other thing to know is that this is a very narrow gap that you have to do. So there's an adjustment point here as well, right? So it works in tandem with this other one. And uh, in order to get access to this, you have to use a very thin 19 millimeter wrench. Um, I had made one custom, but it has since disappeared. Um, as of the filming of this, there is such a 19 millimeter wrench in the Solar Leviathan. Um, I'm gonna try and grab that and put it in the shop and hopefully it stays in the shop. Um, but if it doesn't, like, we're talking about a very thin wrench that you could probably get at a bike store since bikes use a similar style of wrench. Um, but yeah, that, that can be difficult to reach. The other thing that you may have to deal with is, so this uh, affects the twist of the vertical blade. So by pulling or pushing the entire carriage one way or the other, you can change what direction the vertical blade is at. And you can see here that I've got it fully cranked down um, and I would say it's still not quite right which means you're probably going to have to reset the position of the carriage entirely and then recalibrate the, the saw because this position was not great um, and ended up with a, a blade that was dragging too much on the front. So as we come through and out of the log, it would cut up the piece, the, the back of the board we had just cut, which isn't great. So, that's, that's pretty much all of the changes that I have made to the sawmill, as well as a number of the problems that I've seen with it. Um, so I made this electrical box, I figured out that the shaft needed to be replaced. Um, and this wire, this cable, this guy is new. Those are those are what have been changed while I've been working on it, um, but it's it still sounds like the blade is pretty stressed when it goes through the wood, um, and I think that that's because I couldn't get those adjustments to be like fully correct based on the manual because we had to put on these points, and so they're not manufactured. They're kind of like as best we can measure them. Um, so you may have to play around and reset those all completely uh, and start from scratch. Uh, a couple of other things that I've noticed. Uh, it's important to maintain this squareness of the carriage. Um, even once you've adjusted this back wheel. Um, and that's something I don't think that I did super well. I think that this distance here might be a bit larger than this one over here. Um, similarly on this side, just checking to make sure that those wheels square up correctly. And <clears throat> also making sure that the wheels on the track sit well. So you can see this wheel here is rubbing on one side of the track rather than sitting in the middle. And that's something I didn't catch until after we were done um, cutting boards. Uh, and I wish I would have because it kind of makes the whole carriage drag. <laughs> which is makes it a lot harder to get through. Also a note, uh, when you put the cable in, this guy's got a little lock here, so if you twist it, there is an orientation in which the cable remains locked in place. Um, I would think that that's pretty obvious based on the, the, the uh, design of this, but in case it isn't, that's a, that's a tip that I found. Uh, also, as of the filming of this, you have to use a backpack sprayer to provide water onto the blade to keep it cool. This mounting point is normally where the jug would sit, um, but it doesn't produce enough pressure for the water to get from this hose onto the blade when it is vertical. So you might just try increasing the height of this guy. I just didn't have the time to do it because we were in a time crunch to get boards made before the events. Okay, um, I think that is all of the information that I have um, in terms of things that are wrong with the sawmill 
and things that uh, I did to replace. Uh, as one final note, because of this new fit, um, the keyway sits pretty snugly in, or the key sits pretty snugly in this gear, um, and it can be like, I can't get this gear off of the shaft with my hand. So what you do is you get something to brace this from the bottom, and then you take this guy, and you just, um, yeah, you can tap this out. So as long as the gear is supporting all of this weight and you either hammer or use the press, the, uh, the hydraulic automotive bearing press, um, you can push the, uh, the drive shaft out of the gear. And that's how you get it off. And similarly, you can use um, like a piece of square tube around this to push the gear back on. Um, I will also leave behind a list of measurements for what I found these distances between, you know, the bearings and the gear uh, to be to have this belt sit in the proper orientation. So anyway, um, one thing I just watch out for if you're running this is... Um, Keep an eye on the belt and make sure that it's not slipping periodically through your run. You'll probably hear if it slips because it'll start making a lot of noises that it wasn't before. Uh, clicking, rattling noises, or a loud bang if the blade gets pulled back and hits the frame. You definitely don't want that. Um, I'm not positive that this belt is in the right orientation because you can kind of hear that rubbing sound which makes me nervous, uh, makes me think that the belt is wearing down or that something is wearing the belt down. So maybe investigate that and see if you can find something better. Uh, in order to get this gear to go more, you would be more in that direction. You would be off of the set screw, which is kind of why you need a longer keyway. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm, I know that not all of this makes a lot of sense without me taking things apart to show you exactly what I mean, but uh, the internet's a great resource, and feel free to search any of the terms that I've said so far. Uh, I'll probably leave my contact information behind if somebody else is mad enough to take on this beast. Um, it took me two months, uh, two or three months of working on this to, to get the information that I'm giving you now in 18 minutes, which is a, a long time to be working on a single machine. Uh, it's very temperamental. It has a lot of loose parts. It is old. I shouldn't say a lot of loose parts. I should say that it's old and um, it's got a lot of aftermarket things. Uh, the final of which is, uh, because this is an aftermarket electrical box, it doesn't fit you know perfectly in this gap so I had to cut a bit of a notch here in the frame so that it could sit there I'm pretty confident that that's not going to be an issue um, just because that height of the frame is much greater than this here this little slot and they were comfortable enough to leave that you know machined in there for the finish so I'm not too worried about it, but that is the last change for real this time. Um, so, yeah, that's the end of this video. Hopefully, I've covered everything. Um, yeah, good luck to whoever works on this next. It's a real challenging process. Be patient um, and take take as many breaks as you need to keep your sanity. This is this is a tough project if it if it breaks down but totally manageable. Hopefully uh, you guys get a new sawmill at some point and this whole video becomes irrelevant.